Guys, because of this model, Peterbilt is going to be very successful. Hey guys, welcome to the channel, I'm Eddie V. If you're into the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and like this video. Guys, today we're gonna to be talking about the Peterbilt 589, in my opinion of it. There's been a lot, a lot, I mean, a lot of mixed reviews about this. A very popular Minnesotan trucker hates it. I personally like it. It is, they should have done this to the 389, and now, they're do, and now they came out with the 589. The Peterbilt 589 is a beast. And guess what, guys? They're still gonna offer manual transmission in it, which is just awesome. And also, it's gonna come with either a Cummins X15 or a Packard. I would stay away from Packard just because of their reliability issues and go with the X15 and delete them X15s when the DPF system goes uh, about 500,000 to a million miles in the, um, it, when you start driving it. Now, it's against the law to delete the truck, but you make the choice. Anyway, guys, so the Peterbilt 389, the a generation model before that, had a smaller cab in the front it had two windows and a smaller cab the sleeper was bigger and wider so when you're sitting up in a peterbilt 389 or 379 they, there you can reach the other side of your door by just sitting in your passenger seat if you have long hands basically there's not a lot of room in the driver's section it feels like you're tight in a box which a lot of old tr old school truckers including me like a smaller cab when you're driving and a bigger sleeper in the back but that's not always the case if you're especially if you're a local driver driving a day cab and likes to drive in style in a long nose truck because even freightliner classics the old school ones have the same issue and the peterbilt 379 389 just have small cabs with bigger sleepers so there's just not a whole lot of room especially if you have a small sleeper then like a, a dog house sleeper then basically or a flat top sleeper basically you guys gonna have hardly any room to put any of your stuff at all now the peterbilt 589 they have a beautiful long nose uh, hood but they widened their interior of a peterbilt 579 and have the same sleeper options now which i think is just perfect for this the only downside guys is the window the windshield windshield is no longer a two-piece glass it is just one piece with it being one piece like all one piece windshields they're prone to cracks they are not a structural and they're prone to have rock chips and cra cracks affect the windshield a lot more than the two piece my dad drives a peterbilt 388 which is like a 389 except the wheelbase is shorter or, or lower or some i don't know what the difference is they, they look exactly the same um he has <coughs> rock chips in his glass windows but they haven't spread because it's not one piece it's a two piece i've noticed that a lot of one piece windshield trucks do have a lot of cracks in the windshield i got that personally on the freightliner cascadia that i drive and it's always there's always cracks in the windshield constantly from rock chips and that's what i like about the peterbilt 589 that it has a big cab now like i said the only downside is the windshield now the other downside is of course peterbilt doesn't offer a lot of other options for engine wise so those those are your only two options if you do want to put a glider kit in there it's not called a glider kit anymore it's called a rebuilt rebuilt kit which is you buy a wreck truck or truck with a blown up motor and you swap the motor and you have a rebuild kit instead of a glider kit you're no no longer allowed to order glider kits from the dealer or factory because that ended in 2020 now guys the price is going to be, uh, be priced about the same as a peterbilt 379 with um orders coming in at the end of 2023 i believe or the start of 2024 but you can already pre-order them and be good to go on the road with them now what i do like about uh, Peterbilt is they're not going electric uh, as far as I know they may have some concepts but as far as I know they're not go going electric because Cummins who there is their main supplier of engines just came out with the x15 hydrogen model so we're yet to see that come out and put in trucks and see how well it runs and how much power it puts and torque but if Peterbilt stays away from electric trucks and keeps making these long nose hood trucks they'll be in great shape and they'll continue to be successful and selling Peterbilt's. Unlike Freightliner, that's down the grade, and I'll explain in a later video uh, how bad Freightliner actually is. So, 
pretty much excited about this Peterbilt 589. If I had the money, I would actually go and order one myself because under warranty, you can drive up to 500,000 miles, have an issue of depth, take it to dealership and stuff like that. But those are just nice looking trucks. And to, uh, to add to this, guys, it's gonna have standard LED lights on the bottom, I think, of the, uh, of the headlights. And also it's gonna have a custom visor. It's gonna look different than the other visor. I think they told, uh, according to the website, it, they're gonna have a uh, bow visor, from what I heard, a drop visor. So it's gonna look actually cool. It's not gonna look like, an, uh, like a boring stock Peterbilt 389, but it's gonna look like a nice long, new, long nose truck. Not canceled. Guys, I'm Eddie B. 2000. Okay, this particular package. Driving a temp from the 6 Series.